Talk to me a little bit about the state of the Democratic Party today. It, I, one person I've talked to <clears throat> in the wake of the Virginia results said, you know, this is a great night for us, but I really hope that this doesn't paper over all of the deep divisions that we still have in the party that we need to fix. Listen, we've always prided ourselves as Virginia Democrats, uh, a little, perhaps a little bit different, different brand than national Democrats. We have been about, I think, a, a bit broader tent. We haven't had ideological litmus tests. Uh, we think the Democratic Party does better when we are, you know, less about liberal conservative and more about future past when we're forward leaning. Uh, Ralph Northam talked about building a 21st century economy uh, all across Virginia. He talked a lot about you shouldn't have to leave your hometown in a interconnected world to find a world class job. I know in the inner parts of Washington where, where <laughs> I work and where you work, you know, there was a lot of hand wringing and w folks wanting to relitigate uh, 2016. That's not what we're about. I'll leave that to the pundits here in, here in D.C. Do you think the 2016 primary was rigged? No. Straight up, even after reading the revelations in Don Brazil's I think book. that there, I'm not going to get into the questions of what Donna Brazil, she's a friend of mine. Um, let folks have those debates. You know, I think there were, uh, you know, two candidates who ran tough races. Bernie won a bunch. Hillary won a bunch. At the end of the day, Hillary had more delegates, and uh, we went into a national election. The Russia investigation, which of course has uh, consumed much of our politics over the course of the past few months. Uh, I want to ask you in particular. There is increasing focus on Michael Flynn's role, and particularly the role of his son. Is Michael Flynn's son cooperating with your investigation right now? We've not commented on the specific cooperation or non-cooperation of individual witnesses. What we do know is, in the case of Michael Flynn, we had an individual who was national security advisor for, I think, 24 days before he had to get fired because he didn't reveal his contacts with Russians. We've had one individual affiliated with the Trump campaign, Mr. Papadopoulos, convicted of lying to the FBI because he wasn't fully forthcoming in terms of some of the dirt that Russians were offering on Hillary Clinton. We still have this uh, um, mysterious meeting that included uh, the campaign manager, Paul Manafort, who's been indicted. Uh, the son-in-law, Jared Kushner, Donald Trump Jr., were again, even the Russians who were there saying they were offering again dirt on, on Hillary Clinton. But what we do know, and where I think the, cam the, the investigation in a bipartisan way has really moved the needle, is we do know that the Russians tried to tamper with 21 states' electoral systems, and I think across the country, we're raising our guard so that future Russian intervention is protected at the electoral, electoral level. And I think we've raised the issue that is a enormous concern of how Russians used social media in a way to influence the elections. What is the next stage for your investigation? Are Americans going to see public hearings with people that they recognize? There are still a number of individuals. I mean, Michael Cohen, Mr. Trump's lawyer, uh, we want to bring him back. We want to bring Donald Trump Jr. Uh, in. He's not testified yet. In I a still, public way? I, th I think it, some of these individuals, particularly Mr. Trump Jr., who's not part of the government, um, we ought to get a chance to have folks hear his, uh, hear his side of the story. I still believe we need to have Mr. Kushner back before the whole committee, but these are things that uh, the chairman and I will work through. Do you still have full confidence in Chairman Burr, or do you think he's politicized the payments around this Chris Steele dossier in a way that's damaging to the trust between you? Listen, I think it's important <clears throat> that we find out who paid for the Steele dossier. We now found out that both Democrats and Republicans paid. I still wish Mr. Steele would come in and talk to the chairman and I, but no, Richard Burr and I are working very well together. I think we have a trust trust relationship. We both have a lot of pressure on us. We have I have pressure from Democrats who presume the president must be guilty. He has pressure from Republicans who want this whole investigation to go away. I think for the last now close to 11 months, uh, we've had some bumps, but I think we've maintained a bipartisan effort. Let's switch gears a little bit and talk about tax reform, which of course is the next uh, big thing on the agenda here. It seems as though Chuck Schumer is rallying Democrats to vote en masse against this plan. You were a businessman. Why is this plan so bad for the country? Listen, I know we need to simplify our tax code. I know we need to bring our corporate tax rates down lower. I know we need to bring 
those American profits that are caught offshore bring them back. But I also know we need to do it in a fiscally responsible way. We have twenty trillion dollars in debt. So you this think plan, this plan will blow up? This the debt. plan, this plan will. Don't take my word for it. Alan Greenspan, uh, a Republican-appointed Fed chair, has pointed out that when you're close to full employment, and we are close to full employment at this point, if you do a major tax cut, paid for with borrowed money, that will not lead to growth. It will simply grow the deficit and the debt. And for a debt that already is going to choke our kids and our grandkids, you know, interest rates go up a single a one percentage point. That adds $150 billion a year in just additional debt payments. This is not a good plan for middle class families. For somebody like me that's done very well, for the folks who've, who've benefited the most, uh, it, it's, it's a good plan. So you're a no on this bill? Listen, the way this bill looks right now, I'm, I'm not only a no, I'm a heck no. Uh, and I'm so disappointed because the country does need meaningful tax reform. We do need to make our business rates competitive with the rest of the world. I just wish, wish that my Republican colleagues who care I know about the debt and so many of my friends in business who also know that a quick hit sugar high of a tax cut that's unpaid for, that will pay the piper in the end, I wish more of them would step up. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.